Well, scientists like to classify things. And just like you could separate Legos into different sorts of categories, you could sort them by color or by shape or um, by size. Um, scientists find it useful to cl classify things. So we classify matter. And one way to classify it is by its physical state. The three common states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. Um, and what happens here is I usually end up saying everything on the next few slides when I talk about this picture. And so then we'll have to go through the slides quickly, but it'll be fine. So we're looking here at water. Water's nice because we are familiar with it in all three of its physical states. When it's a solid, we call it ice. When it's a liquid, we call it water. And when it's in the gas state, we call it steam. And the difference between these different states of matter has to do with what the particles are doing relative to each other. In the solid state, these particles are arranged in a very particular order. You see they're kind of in lines, and they're not moving around. They're wiggling, they're vibrating, because all matter is moving, but they're just vibrating. And this corresponds, we have a, I have a student state that, um, there are three states of students, you are currently in the solid state because you're sitting in chairs in rows, right? And you're not moving relative to each other, but you are not completely still, are you? I think everybody's still breathing. So even just breathing, your chest is moving a little. You're scratching your nose, you're taking notes, you're looking at the clock, when's this going to be over? But you're moving. In the liquid state, the particles are still about the same distance apart. Some books say they're touchingly close. They're close enough that you could reach out and touch the next one. So they're still close together. But now these molecules are moving around pretty much randomly. And this is what happens to students when we have lab. Because everybody, we're going to push all the chairs up to the front, and people will be milling about. You'll be going to the balance, and you'll be going to the cart to get something, and you'll be moving relative to each other. That's what the particles, the molecules or the atoms, are doing when something is in the liquid state. In the gas state, now the particles are much farther apart. They're not interacting at all, and they move completely independently of each other. And the gas state for students is 450 when class is over, the door opens and the gas disperses into the atmosphere and you all go off in different directions. And you're far, far away from each other. That's what the molecules do in a gas. They move around independently. They'll just travel in a straight line until they bump into something. So then here's all the words. Um, solid state, we've got them, the, the particles packed close together. They're going to vibrate or oscillate, but they don't move around. And we observe that solids have a fixed volume and a rigid shape. Think of ice cubes. If you take an ice cube and you put it in a big bowl, and then you take it and you put it in a small cup, did it change its shape? No, the ice cube remains cube-shaped, right? And it didn't change its volume. There are two kinds, two general kinds of solids. Um, crystalline and amorphous. A is a prefix meaning without. When a superhero morphs, what does he do? He changes shape, right? Morph has to do with shape. So amorphous implies without shape. A crystalline solid is like this example A where all the atoms or molecules are arranged. They have a regular repeating order that extends through a long distance in the solid. Amorphous solids are jumbled up and messy, and there's no order. So you guys as a class right now, are you amorphous or are you crystalline? You're crystalline because you're lined up along each side of the bench. If you have a bunch of kindergartners and you say, come on, gather up for circle time, and they just plop down to hear a story, are they going to be crystalline or amorphous? Amorphous. amorphous. Just, they might not even be facing the same direction, right? <laughs> I, 
I've, I've got a child who started kindergarten yesterday, so I know how clueless five-year-olds can be. They're a lot of fun. So that was solids. Liquids, here, they're still close to each other. But liquids have a fixed volume and assume the shape of their container. So solids and liquids both have fixed volumes. Their volumes don't change. But if you take water from a tall, skinny glass and you pour it into a wide, shallow dish, the shape of it changes, right? The volume doesn't change, but the shape changes. So that's an important difference between liquids and solids. They can do that because their particles are free to move relative to each other. They're not stuck together, fixed in position. And then gases. We have separation, large distances between the particles. They are free to move relative to each other. Because there's so much space, gases are compressible. If we look at this picture, here we have a, a solid. If you put it in a, in a piston and press down on the top, you can't squish it. You think of a rock. You put pressure on it. Does it get smaller? No. Solid uh, liquids aren't compressible either, which is really good for your brakes. The brakes in your car operate on a hydraulic system where you put pressure on the pedal of your car, and that puts pressure on a liquid, the brake fluid. And the fluid transfers that pressure to your wheels and applies pressure to the brakes and causes your car to stop. Gases, though, have a lot of empty space. And so when you put them in a piston and press down, this isn't a piston, it's a cylinder. When you put them in a cylinder and press down on the piston, you can squeeze them closer together. You can compress them. If you have air in your gas line, when you put your foot on the brakes, the gas that's in there, the air, is going to get smaller and you're not going to get that transfer of force to your wheels and your brakes aren't going to work very well. So gases are compressible, liquids and solids are not. Gases also assume the shape of their container. They also assume the volume of their container. So each of these, if we look at liquids and solids, they have something in common. They retain the same volume. Gases and liquids have in common that their shapes are changeable. And yet they're all different in the sense that gases are compressible um, and solids are not. They don't change their shape. That, that last bit, let will just go back and delete that. So this is a good table that just kind of summarizes all of that stuff. Any questions? <coughs>